Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Get Hooked on Health. I'll be your host, McGraw Millhaven. Last week, we were eating out and looking at nutrition on the run. This week, we observe Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We devote the entire show to cancer prevention and treatment. Today, Victoria Babu follows a heartwarming story dealing with a child cancer patient. And Heather Hawk comes back and visits the St. Louis University Cancer Center. And a leading cancer researcher, Dr. Timothy Eberline, will join us in studio. We're excited about this. He'll give us bright hope for the future on fighting cancer. But first, in observance of October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, joining me in studio is OBGYN Dr. Teresa Knight from St. John's and Missouri Baptist. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Breast cancer gets a lot of attention, as it should. But there are a number of female cancers that don't get as much attention. What are some of those? Oh, that's absolutely right. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk about some of those other cancers because since um, there is so much less known about those cancers, they're, they're really terrifying. And it's a, a really a terrifying diagnosis to have or even think that you may have. Um, some of those other cancers that you can get um, include uh, uterine cancer, cancer of the uterus, ovarian cancer, cancer uh, involving the ovaries, um, and cervical cancer. When you talk about breast cancer, you always hear about self-examinations, and that's the most important part. But how does a woman know or go to check some of these other cancers? That's really why ovarian cancer is such a bad actor. Um, we don't have any good tool, any good screening tool, any good test for women to do monthly or annually to know that they don't have ovarian cancer. Thankfully, ovarian cancer is um, not terribly common. It occurs in about one out of 70 women, so less than 2% of the population. Um, currently, the, the best exam that we have is on annual exam, we do what's, what's called a bimanual exam. Um, and during the bimanual exam, we actually try to palpate or feel the ovary. Um, unfortunately, it's not very specific. There, there are no symptoms, there are no side effects, there is nothing that says, you know what, I'm just not feeling right, I need to go to the doctor? The, the symptoms for ovarian cancer are very nonspecific um, and unfortunately don't occur until pretty late in the game. And that's because there's so much room within the abdomen for the ovary to grow before it starts to cause problems. Um, so some of the symptoms can be um, feeling full and bloated, uh, can be uh, actually feeling some fluid in the belly and, and on exam you can actually see fluid on the belly. Um, but those are things that again occur very, very late uh, in the disease process and um, can be confused with irritable bowel, which is so very common. Right. Is it, is it age? Is it older, younger? Does, does that have anything to do with it? Absolutely. Um, ovarian cancer occurs primarily in women who are either perimenopausal or postmenopausal. Um, and for women who are at increased risk or whom an OBGYN suspects that they might have ovarian cancer, then the next step, the next best way to take a look at the ovaries would be to do an ultrasound. Um, preferably a vaginal probe ultrasound because you can actually get closer to the ovary and get a better idea of what's going on. Unfortunately, when you do an ultrasound, nine out of ten times, that ultrasound will show a mass that is benign. So you see a mass, you say, oh, there's a mass in the ov ovary. Everyone gets very, very upset, very nervous, but really nine out of ten times it'll be nothing, it'll be benign. Let's talk about hysterectomies mm -hmm. for a second because that's garnered a lot of attention. Uh -huh they thought, well, only take it out when we need to. Then it seemed like they wanted to always take it out. Now where does the medical, medical, medical community stand on all oh, this? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. Because um, if a woman is going to have a hysterectomy for benign reasons, so she has uterine fibroids, a, a type of growth in the uterus, or heavy bleeding, or whatever reason she has a hysterectomy, for women who are 45 years of age or older, an OBGYN will always offer what's called a prophylactic ovarectomy. So we'll always offer the opportunity to remove the ovaries at that time because of this 1 in 70 risk of perhaps getting an ovarian cancer over the rest of her lifetime. Um, and, and besides, in addition to ovarian cancer, the chance of having ovarian cysts or, or having some other reason to have the ovary removed because it's just causing problems is about 15%. When you're told you have ovarian cancer, uh -huh. Is that a death sentence in the year 2004? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, it it's still is, um, I think, of, of all of the cancers, the worst actor because we're finding, again, we're finding it so late in the game. Right. Um, but no, it doesn't have to be a death sentence because um, 
in removing the cancer and doing the staging, that can give us a lot better idea of, of what the prognosis is. And then certainly uh, chemotherapy and the option of chemotherapy is there. All right, Dr. Teresa Knight, OBGYN, thank you very much with Missouri Baptist and St. John's. We'll be back in a moment. Oh, by the way, if you want more information, you can go to gethookedonhealth.com. Dr. Thanks. Thank great. you. We're back in a moment. Get Hooked on Health right here on Charter.